What's up and welcome back to another episode of the Movie Newbie. I'm your host, Jabrina Sahemi, and joining me virtually for, I don't know actually, back again virtually, let's say it that way. Uh, we have Raf and Ali joining us. Um, Raf, and I'd say, I'd say like 100% connection. Um, Ali, I think his connection is not doing too well, so there might be a little bit of a lag. Look, there's probably there's probably a reason why we don't do this anymore, and the reason is because it took us, I think, 45 minutes to get recording uh, on this episode because we were like, wait, what's remote record? What do we do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Ollie, unfortunately, was, for some reason, having the, the most struggle of all. Um, yeah, the internet gods were not looking down kindly on me today. You did not pray enough this morning, no. Ollie. No, no. But yeah. knock on wood, it's working we at the moment, right? The show. We seem to be in the clear. Yes. Yeah. Although I think so. I, it's trepidatious to say the least that this episode might just implode and we it might never air, and then we might just quit yeah. the movie newbie. <laughs> I think we're we're at this yeah. point. Our nerves are now like, do we carry on? At what cost? <laughs> at what cost? Yeah. This podcast. That's that's the cost. That is the cost. Yeah. That is. So anyways, today we're talking about the second film in the AI sci-fi theme. And uh, for this one, we're going with another James Cameron. Also, I realized um, in the bonus note, I said David Cameron <laughs> is, the, is the director. <laughs> it's not David Cameron. It's James that Cameron. That is someone else both, that we do not like. Both are two dudes that I'm not a fan of. <laughs> and uh, yeah, today we did. Uh, we're, we're talking about The Terminator, the first one. With man like Arnold Schwarzenegger um, yeah. and uh, many others like Lyndall Hamilton, Hamilton, yeah, Michael Bean, Bean, Bean. I want to say Bean. Paul Winfield. I want to say Bean. Bean. Yeah. I want to say Bean. Yeah, this is a 1984 film, and you can definitely tell this film is from 1984. Let's put it that way. Uh, but if you don't know about the Terminator or the whole franchise slash universe. Um, have you been living under a rock? Because this is like one of the biggest action universes ever. I guess it kickstarted the whole action, like big action kind of thing. I don't know. Would you say that? Maybe this and like Die Hard and stuff? Yeah, I mean, um, definitely for the 80s. It definitely launched yeah. uh, a whole new wave of not just action, but like, at least for Terminator sci-fi, you know, kind of kind of reinventing the genre of sci-fi. And in your theme, AI. Yeah, yeah, and it's a completely different kind of AI um, in comparison to the AI we had in 2001 Space Odyssey. Completely different. A lot more, um, well, I guess this would be like a cyborg, so like they're half human, half robot on the inside. Um, but yeah, Ollie, initial thoughts. Yeah, so um, actually, this was my first time watching this movie. Uh, of course, I've seen T2. I've seen plenty of the sequels. I'm very familiar with the IP universe. But I, for whatever reason, never sat down and watched the Terminator, the original one. So I was quite excited to get to this. And um, you have to say, I, I really enjoyed it. You said it was like very clearly from 1984. This might be the most 1984 movie ever made. But, um, but I think in a good way. I think like... It does drag a little bit in the last half an hour, but apart from that, I feel like the setup mainly, I feel like it should the script should be taught in screenwriting classes if it's not. It's so economical. The cutting is so good. I love how they introduce you to this world and establish the setup. I just think it's really tight and um, really well wound. Um, and another thing I really loved about this film, aside from all of the kick-ass action and world building and some of the performances too, uh, was the fact that even though this is a sci-fi film, it's not really a sci-fi film. It's actually kind of a slasher film, but in dressed up as a sci-fi film. And I think that's a big reason yeah. why it works. Yeah. The Terminator is basically Michael Myers from Halloween, right? Word. And Linda Hamilton is the yeah. final girl. Yeah. You know, she's Jamie Lee Curtis mm. or whoever you know, whoever else you can think of. And I think slasher films were yeah. really big at the time this film was made. So I think it's. It's a very clever um, Trojan horse from James Cameron. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Your initial thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I thought that this is such a, like Ollie said, such a 
not just a quintessential like 1984 film, but a quintessential 80s film. It's got every landmark uh, 80s film. It's got every like 80s film trademark that one would love and one would assume, and it it it, it completely fills the 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 80s era for me. Um, but beyond that, it also establishes James Cameron as a prominent not just action director, but economical director in the sense that like he knows how to weave in a tight story about quite a complex and huge um, concept. Uh, It's no easy task, but James Cameron does it so brilliantly. And then obviously we're introduced to one of the most, you know, prominent, uh, arguably one of the most... uh, pop culture references of all time uh Arnold Schwarzenegger it's not a tumor uh you know uh, we're introduced <laughs> to this guy you know and I know that this guy had already done quite a lot in the 80s already uh but this really cemented him kind of as a prolific actor um I think in my in my honest opinion the Terminator is just up there in terms of pop culture references um and then you also get Linda Hamilton uh who plays Sarah Connor who is another iconic iconic character and i like to say that uh as i wrap up this was also made seven years before t2 so you get to see such a drastic difference between both movies and how both Mm -hmm. movies kind of are um are apart from one another they can like kind of live on their own you know world yeah for sure for sure well jabria what what did you think of the film shall we get to our favorite scene. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. What are you, what are your thoughts? Oh, right. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I liked it. It's, it was, uh, it's your, like, like both of you guys said, it's such an eighties film mm. and to see such an iconic movie character, I think, well, maybe we can get to this later. It's a little bit, our, our bonus question, Ew. but, um, he's definitely like in the top five most iconic mm. characters ever created i think for sure like in in the in the film universe for sure uh, and quite arguable but yeah and the perfect person to uh, play i actually i actually have what, some the, um, the some behind the scenes Arnold? info here do you guys know that um so it wasn't written for arnold because Go, james shoot. cameron and arnold didn't actually know each other at that point when he was writing the script um but the so the guy who plays one of the cops Lance Herrickson, he's the the skinny cop. He actually is good friends. He was good friends with uh, James Cameron, and he shows mm-hmm. up in a lot of his right. films. And he kind of wrote the film with him in mind. But there were a bunch of different uh, people attached, or like people that they pitched this, or like they offered it to, including Sylvester Stallone and Randy Quaid. Sylvester Stallone, you get, you know, because he's also another mm. big hulking action oh. star from the eighties, but. But Randy Quaid, I don't know if you guys know who Randy Quaid is, but yeah. he's kind of yeah. like the crazy dude from Independence Day. You know, the one who's like, I'll am back. <laughs> so yeah. not exactly what you think of when back. you think of yeah. the Terminator. Um, but yeah, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, I was reading about it, thought this film was going to be a massive flop. Yeah. He thought it was a real piece of shit. And he thought it was going to kill off whatever acting career he had up until that point. Whereas, in fact, it actually kind of made it, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, damn. Yeah, and there must, well, be, yeah. there must be so many stories revolving this kind of iconic film, including, like, James Cameron's guerrilla filmmaking, which was introduced in big concept filmmaking. So he kind of took that inspiration to gorilla to to have that gorilla filmmaking in a kind of bigger budget movie but also this movie was made for like i don't know six million dollars and even though you can see it like ollie said it's so economical in in the way that it tries to tell its story uh and the way it tries to build action and the way it tries to build its Um, sets all Um, right nice yeah so uh how about we move to our favorite scenes and um yeah how about we go with ollie how about you start? Kick us off with your favorite sure. scene. Sure. Um, it's kind of two scenes stuck together, but I really liked everything that kind of happened in the police station. Uh, so I loved yeah. the... This is a bit of a cheat, so apologies if I'm stepping over anyone else's answer. 
but I love like just the back and forth between the two cops and um, Kyle Reese, and then also like the forensic psychologist, the sort of criminal psychologist. Mm-hmm. I think whoever I, I think I wrote his name yeah. down somewhere, but that actor absolutely killed it. He was so funny. And then leading up to um, the raid that happens when uh, the Terminator storms into the police station, you know, you have the famous "I'll be back" line. I had never, yep. I never knew yep. that that was the context where he just leaves and then he just comes back with his car and drives it right <laughs> into the fucking reception, <laughs> killing the guy at the front desk. It's so, it's like clearly, it's like the funniest part of the movie as well. Um, yeah. But then just like, just like him stalking the. Uh, the police station, like just like holding this sort of shotgun in one hand and literally just like blasting people in the face the, ma- the moment they cross him yeah. in the corridor. Like people are actually like running away from him and he just shoots them in the back and they fly into walls. It's it's just great stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's got, it's almost got like that kind of, um, maybe John Woo was inspired by this, but in Harold Boiled where like everything kind of blows up, everyone's like flying everywhere. There's like materials being like scattered all over. And it's just like kind of this chaotic scene. Yet the only thing that's not chaotic about that scene is Arnold Schwarzenegger just plowing down calmly, like through the halls and like precision with precision and just deadliness. He's the only one who's like, you yeah. know, not fucking jagged and like running everywhere. He's just like walking, shooting, walking, shooting. It's a goddamn like maniacal killer. Yeah, and it just shows that like from the very beginning of his career, because I know this was only the second film I think that James Cameron made, and it was the first film that he didn't disown. Because so I think he made like mm. a Piranha sequel where he was locked out of the editing room. It was like really shitty quality. But anyway, mm. so he knew how he knew ballistics from like the very beginning yeah. he knew how to stage a shootout he knew how to shoot sh- you know show things going bang basically and yeah it's just mm. kick ass so yeah that's my favorite scene yeah yeah i yeah. i had i had that one well, up there you stole my favorite scene yeah. oh wait did we all pick yeah. the same scene yeah i picked that one i also i also had that one on top but i'll i'll um i'll pick a different one just for variety's sake i have the terminator fixing himself in his like little hotel room or apartment (laughs) or you know that space (laughs) just because i think it shows it really reveals the practical element of this film which is just amazing i mean the practical effects are just dope for 1984 like what they recreated for the arm and the face and yeah today's standards we're thinking wow this this could be crap with it but i think it gives it a a certain charm and (laughs) and a certain look and for back then again it was it was kind of like mind-bending um and i just love i just love anything that's got to do with like anything like practical elements so i thought it was i thought it was great and i it's a it's a nice like practical scene that uh it's just arnold showing up his biceps and fucking looking looking like a badass well that's that it's funny that that's your favorite scene raf because i mean i think that's probably one of my like i think one of the worst scenes in the movie i I get it (laughs) i I do love the charm but it's more just like the i actually laugh burst out laughing when it it was like showing him with his you know like mask on trying to put it yeah. take his eye out yeah. and then it just like sort of cuts awkwardly to the real schwarzenegger <laughs> standing in front of the mirror i love it so funny. i love it so much i was <laughs> like I yes so it doesn't try to well. hide it doesn't try to it hide it was the worst cut i've it's... ever seen in my life <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i was watching that and i i burst out laughing as well it was so funny. yeah uh, special place in my heart that one <laughs> jabria what about you yeah <laughs> I mean that was my favorite scene, uh, the the police one. Yeah, I can't really famous, think of very other ones. I, like, um, yeah, no, There's, I'm uh, just gonna have to go with the that classic because I found like a bunch of the other scenes like kind of funny. Um, what else was there? The classic Bill Paxton scene as well at the beginning, where he like puts his arm in his body, and there's that like, "Give me your clothes." <laughs> Give me all your clothes. And they're like, fuck you, asshole. And then later he's got that as one of his <laughs> drop down options for responding to the to the landlord. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh yeah. <laughs> also, funny enough. Yeah, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> funny enough, Ollie, you mentioned that you had not never heard the the line uh, I'll be back in its pure form in this because it's the first time you watched this movie. But also, it's the first time that they say, come with me if you want to live. And it's not 
you know, the Terminator that says it like we are quite accustomed to because in T2 he says it. But here it's um, it's uh, Kyle Reese who who says it. So just a little... Yeah, no, that, nice that's throw. I, I, I kind of forgot that that line was in T2. So so when it came up in this, mm. I more recognized it because it's been parodied in so many other films. Like it's of also course, in Community as well. Did any of you guys watch Community, the TV yeah. series? You know, when they have yeah, the paintball yeah, yeah, episode, yeah, yeah. he's like, come with me if you don't want paint yeah. on your trousers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's Community like references every single like pop culture hit. Yeah, I guess. definitely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, shall we move to favorite performances? Let's go. Who wants to go first? Well, I feel like whoever's going to go first is probably going to steal everyone's answer. So, Jabril, why don't you go first? Are we going to go with Arnold? Ooh, no, I, I, I have a different one. <laughs> Me too. I have a different one. But please. Yeah, I was going to, I'm, I'm just going to go with Arnold just because, um, I don't know. I haven't really seen any, I guess maybe what? robocop would be the closest thing to like a cyborg kind of oh wait uh there's blade runner too when did blade runner come out 78 no blade runner came out in 85 oh shit so after this film yeah so like i mean arnold did a really good job as like a cyborg i thought um and really funny the way the way it worked like i mean that's that's the thing like it was hard to take this film seriously so like I really wasn't really look at looking for like amazing knock it out of this like knock it out of the park performances. Mm. I was just looking for the action, you know, the fun. Um and yeah, Arnold gave it to me. Yeah. Like in the purest <laughs> way basically. In the best in the best possible way he gave it to you real good. <laughs> um Yeah. <laughs> and no, honestly, I I've I uh, yeah. Arnold established again established himself as as the ultimate kind of almost badass but also it's like all he said as well it's he's he's terrifying and it has that kind of Halloween-esque um a horror element to it but also applied the the kind of yeah the would you what would you call it the, the robotic kind of movements yeah that kind of like staccato-esque kind of like even the way he turns his head is like it, it's a good it's a good performance it's all absolutely performance. Cause I, um, I think you as an actor would probably appreciate this yeah. raf most actor actors because you know arnold was a bodybuilder before he was an actor he wasn't mm-hmm. classically trained they'd probably try to put too much of a stamp on it you know they'd they'd, mm. they'd try to like find the humanity of the character or they'd want to do something memorable <laughs> yeah. so they would try and bring too much character to it yet he resists that yeah. he's good at just sort of being a blank slate because he literally is a machine and that that must yeah. be harder to yeah. to to say than to actually do yeah well i think i think his body would be something that he's most in control of just <clears throat> considering that he's like uh he was a bodybuilder and they'd have to like pose on stage and do that in front of loads of people so i think i guess i don't know I don't know anything about Arnold's career as an actor, but I'd say the the non-physical part would be the most difficult for him to achieve. I think like him acting like the way he did was like a no-brainer. I thought mm-hmm. um his movement seemed quite natural. I didn't even it didn't even seem like like disjointed in a way. It didn't it looked robotic in a natural way. It's weird. Mm. Uh it's a great documentary. It's a really good. It, I mean, it is from the 70s, so um yeah it's it's a great documentary if you're into working out and things like that like it gets you pumped up to want to go to the gym and stuff i i like i watched it when i was like super into the gym and like when i was what 20 19 when you were yeah. when you were helping me bulk up yeah when we were, when we were doing uh intervals in the, <laughs> in the gym. but yeah let's not get too carried away um who are you who are you I don't know, I don't know. raf who is your favorite it's performance not a tuma um my favorite performance i'll have to give it to linda hamilton um and i would give it to her in the second in the sequel as well i think she's just (laughs) brilliant i know we're not talking about the sequel but i'm just like she also deserves it in the sequel she's she gives it she if anything she is the counterbalance to arnold schwarzenegger's performance she gives it the humanity she gives it the emotion she gives it you know kind of the full range of 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 a layered performance um and yeah it's it's a perfect balance between um 
who's chasing her, which is this cyborg killer. Um, so to have someone human, vulnerable, complex, that's exactly what you need to counter the Terminator. And she also is kind of a, you know, knows how to, knows how to survive in her own way. And, 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 uh, has, has some standout scenes. Perfectly yeah. Cool, I would, I was going to say the same thing. I think she's fantastic in this film. I thought, mm. I obviously, I think I was more familiar with her from T2 because I've seen T2 probably like a dozen times in my life. I loved that film as a teenager and You're probably going to watch it again now that you've watched T1. I'm going to watch it again. Oh yeah. I've watched T1. Absolutely. Yeah. I Absolutely. Watch it but, too. um, like at the, when, when they first introduced her in this film, I thought, yeah, she's playing the part well, but that's not that's not Sarah Connor. She's not the Sarah Connor I know. But what's the gift of her yeah. performance is that she does, even when she's playing this sort of Cinderella character before she goes to the ball, she's, you know, she's this timid, sort of reserved, quiet, not particularly self-assured woman. Um, I'm like, yeah, that's not Sarah Connor I know, but she adds, she puts some of the seeds of who she becomes later. And by the end of the film, you do see that coming exactly. out. Um, and so I, I actually think in retrospect, it was a really good performance. Um, yeah. And, and to, to add on to that, um, she, there's also, cause this is like you know, the fourth time I watched this film, there's like an added quality of like, is she losing her mind? Mm. Cause you know, to grasp yeah. this as a human, where there's a cyborg out there, like a, basically a person that looks like a human that can't die, that can't be killed. And there's another dude that comes out who also says he's from the future. It's like to get, to gather all that information. Like you can see her psyche kind of like get warped a little. And she's like, am I fucking losing my mind? And obviously in the second, like that is even more layered, um, that kind of sanity. Uh, but I thought it's, yeah, I thought, the, the the complexion between receiving all that information at, in one go is and then obviously having to survive and you know from being hunted uh it's, it's, yeah it's just great it's just great so it's so layered so complex yeah. yeah um speaking of sarah connor have you ever guys did you guys watch that tv show chuck <laughs> during the no no there was there was like a <laughs> Did you say Chuck? Yeah, Lyndall Hamilton is also in Chuck. But no, yeah, I know which show you're talking about. It's um the 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 Sarah, the Sarah Connor, Connor Sarah Chronicles. Connor um, That's what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Did, did any no. of you guys watch it? No. I, I, <laughs> yeah, no, I never watched it. Either. I think I started watching yeah. it, but yeah, I, just I feel like it was one of those shows that was on AXN or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it was. On, I remember it was on yeah. uh, not AXN. AXN, AXN had AXN, all like the right, weird right. It was kind AXN. of crappy American yeah. action shows. It, it had yeah, like was that. Fear there Factor. Was like, um, it had um, yeah, Legend of the Seeker. Yeah, yeah like Young Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, you know what? I don't think <laughs> upon like doing a quick investigation, I don't think it was that terrible of a show. To be honest, like it didn't get. It went on was like, for a hey, while. You don't no, say it that. It <laughs> <laughs> no, it only had two seasons. Granted, it only lasted from 2008 oh, to 2009. Oh, okay. Maybe they re. Yeah, <laughs> to maybe real, like it went Singapore on forever. Afford any other shows? <laughs> I think I think it went on forever on AXN. It, they probably replayed it. And, yeah, <laughs> but it yeah. got not terrible reviews, and like I think the second season got like a lot of praise. But yeah, anyways. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Favorite quote. I'm going to go first. Um, we already kind of spoke about this scene, um, but I, I, I just, uh, this made me burst out laughing when the guy was like, hey, buddy, you got a dead cat in there or what? <laughs> <laughs> and then the Terminator goes through like the list of um, re replies and he's like, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> fuck you, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's just the, the simple line readings that get you. Hey, only the '80s had the best lines. Uh, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give that to the '80s. They had some of the best lines and the best sex scenes. <laughs> Dude, yeah, this, oh this sex God, scene. That scene. This sex so scene. Silly. When it sort of like held on her, the fist clutching the sheets, and then it yeah. went into slow motion. Yeah. Hey, yeah. to to a lot of people, that's their sexual <laughs> awakening. I, so I wonder funny. if James Cameron has ever had sex uh. before. <laughs> like, I don't think he was definitely a virgin at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, That's funny. Uh, That's very funny. That was All so right. Funny. Boys being Raph. boys. Um, 
my favorite quote, also <laughs> kind of random. Like I did not expect this to be my favorite. Uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of great lines in this, a lot of memorable lines, but this one will go to. Um, let me just get his name real quick because I have forgotten, but Paul Winfield, who plays Traxler, it's the conversation between him and um, Lawrence Herrickson, uh, Henrickson. And Paul goes, how do I look? And Lance replies, eh, you kind of look like shit. And then he just replies, yo, mama. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wait, why does it, why, why why does he say that? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know if I'm the only one who caught that or if I imagined it, but I'm pretty sure it's a line of the film. Did he start the Yo Mama trend? No. He might have started the no. Yo Mama. He just, like, straight up, just, like, imagine someone That's saying, a... like, you look like shit, and the guy is just like, Yo Mama. <laughs> Man, both of them were so funny. Like, they were great. Just the stuff that they were saying made me laugh so so much, yeah. Kind of reminded me of, like, some of the stuff from, like, the other guys. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, the original yeah. other guys. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're the OG. Yeah, uh, I, mine's not really. Mine's kind of an exchange. Can I say the whole exchange? Go on then. Yeah, he's I'm gonna, gonna do give my up acting. like a, he's okay. gonna <clears throat> ten, a ten minute scene. Take what away, day is away. it? The date? Twelfth May <laughs> Thursday. What <one> year? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's great that because good. you don't that know was, he's from the future. Really solid. Good. Yeah. Honestly, he gives he gives such a um, what do you call it? such a dramatic performance that Michael Bean for Kyle Reese. So he's like, te- "What are you very, doing?" He's kind of terrible, but it makes sense because he's he's yeah. like a virgin from the future. He's <laughs> like who he just comes from this bleak hellscape where there's like nothing yeah. chill going on whatsoever. So he's got yeah. no chill. <laughs> He's, yeah. Dude, yeah, that guy is in panic mode all the time. <laughs> yeah. He just and he comes to our reality and he's like, "What are you?" He's like clenching, you yeah. know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, it's like a, it's like with a fedora and shit, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Sarah Connor. Oh. <laughs> Armchair moment. All right. So yeah. So who wants to? Take it away with it with an armchair more moment. I feel like I know what you guys are gonna pick for this. <laughs> it's the scene that I said was the best scene in the film, <laughs> or my favorite scene. Um, uh, armchair moment. I uh, I think there was definitely a few bits that were a little clunky, and maybe to Ollie's point at the beginning, like that dragged just a little bit, mm. you know. And maybe an unnecessary sex scene. Like I'm like, did I? Did we? need to have that but it's the 80s so maybe we didn't need to have that yeah maybe that was maybe that was i think it was probably in the contracts back then (laughs) yeah you gotta have a you gotta see your tits sorry guys (laughs) (laughs) sorry sorry Sorry. um man yeah i've i have a couple of armchair moments i guess um i we haven't mentioned it yet but i i think the the endoskeleton looked kind of terrible (laughs) <laughs> I know that it was made like, you know, in 1984 and he didn't have a big budget, but it, it just, it completely took the wind out of the sails at the end because he's meant to be really threatening and intimidating. Yet it looks like <laughs> something that was made by like a Wes Anderson stop motion studio or something. It was like, it didn't look yeah. like it could, it did not look nearly as strong as Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was like, I thought you could like yeah. kick it over or like a, like a, a gentle gust of wind might destroy that thing. So, I <laughs> have you ever seen those like uh, Japanese where they they dress in like black suits and they make it look as if you're like jumping in the air? Yeah, and stuff. it's like a type of puppetry. That's kind of what it looked like. It looked so frail. No, it looked. He looked really mm. rickety. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And but you guys are talking about when it's literally when they use kind of that stop motion CGI. Yes. Um, quality not when they not when they're actually using the let's say um the full figure practical terminator because there's also scenes where they use that and i'm like that looks great i think like the scenes um, when it was chasing after them that was still that was, yeah. i think they, they had to yeah. do that in yeah. stop motion basically from what i understand yeah. or like when he's or when like he uh, you you see him coming out of the fire yeah, yeah i guess you know that, that there's definitely some but yeah, I, I have a hard time giving this that my armchair moment just because you know six million nineteen eighty four. I'm like, sure, well, yeah, yeah. That, that's a bit harsh. 
My my yeah, other yeah, armchair yeah. moment yeah. would have been, I don't. I wish they didn't sh- cut to the future. I actually feel mm. like it would have been better if they if we didn't see what the future looked yeah. like, and it was all just in our I'm imaginations. You. Or you save the the future until the very very end. Um, exactly. Because I just didn't. I don't think they needed to keep cutting back and forth, and it kind of killed the pacing in places. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm a, I, I agree. yeah, I definitely agree with That's... you. There's also like one scene from the future where there's a Terminator that just like suddenly walks in, starts killing everyone, and I'm like, that was pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Like he just. <laughs> that's pretty easy. They don't have a great defense. Well, I guess they, I see. That's why they they need Sarah Connor. Why it's really important because they're getting their asses pwned. It's like when you and me played Overwatch the other day and we were just getting destroyed. <laughs> it's like we need <laughs> we need we Jay. Need Jay. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Yeah. I think that would be. I would. I would piggyback on that. On that armchair moment is l- revealing less of the future and maybe having at one time like that one time towards the end to reveal maybe a potential sequel um which kind of happened it's funny that we say we we um or that you guys gave armchair moments to the practice uh, to the special effects because literally the sequel was s- like groundbreaking in the special effects so obviously james cameron learned a lot from doing this film mm. which is again why i don't give it an armchair moment because i'm like without yeah. learning from this film he wouldn't have had the groundbreaking special effects he did for t2 yeah Exactly. And I guess, like, also with the breakthroughs and, like, computer graphics yeah, yeah. and whatnot, like, it really changed the game for T2 and T3. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I w- yeah, I was going to just mention that sex scene in <laughs> in the armchair. Yeah. Like, this unnecessary. Yeah. But, yeah, it's the 80s. Yeah, it's the 80s. Yeah. What you going to do? They probably did some coke during set as well. <laughs> like, what you going to do? It's the yeah. 80s. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that leaves us with the bonus question. Am I right? Yes, sir. Um, so for this one, uh, since we're doing the Terminator, I think this has been our most iconic character on this. Um, what about Jack from Titanic? This, uh, E.T. <laughs> yeah, E.T. Yeah. Um, um, I don't. I think like E.T. Terminator. I don't know. I can't think of any other like super iconic characters that we've done on the podcast. Um. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, E.T. Terminator. Also, I think as of this right. episode, is, is James Cameron now our, is the director we've done the most? He's, yeah, he's our favorite director, it seems. <laughs> it's very Although possible. the next episode, <laughs> we'll have him on par with someone else then. I think we've done... This will be oh, the no, third this will be the fourth Cameron, James Cameron. Cause we, did, we did a whole fourth. James Cameron yeah. series. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. But a whole right. we literally did a master class uh, that yeah, I picked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the question is, the question is, um do you think the term like the terminator as a character is the most iconic character ever? And if not, who do you think is or what character do you think is? Wow. That's a good one. Iconic, like, like uh, c- cinem- if you want, cinematic you can character? give like a top Cin- three. Yeah, cinematic okay. characters. Yeah, give me a top three. So we're not talking about like Jesus Christ or mm. something. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that can be your favorite with, character, like, Ollie, um, if you want. Oedipus or whatever. It's everyone's favorite character. <laughs> I'll have you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. Um, Jesus, man. Wow. Oh. Uh, Raf, that's yeah, a good do you have one. An answer off the top of your head, I have a, I have a couple. I think, I honestly, I think it's hard because we're talking about as well uh, in terms of timeline. The Terminator, nineteen eighty four. We're in two thousand four, and that's forty years of of pop culture reference and pop culture icon, right? I have also, I mean, I have to give one to the Terminator for sure. Um, the, there's Yoda. Mother flipping Yoda, you know, and, and that was even bef- that was like what nineteen was he introduced in the first Star Wars shit? No, nineteen eighty two, uh, Eight, Empire Strikes Back. 80, no, he wasn't eighty two, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um. So there's Yoda, but then there's also newer characters like the Joker. Heath Ledger's Joker uh, is gonna probably you know be remembered for a hundred a hundred years. There's oh god, it's it's hard. It's there's so many iconic characters out of there like neo harry potter yeah it depends on the definition if you mean iconic by yeah famous like recognizable like you go to 
any country in the world and you show them a picture and you're like, who's this? And they'll know who that yeah. is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, in terms of maybe like, honestly, it might be something like Mickey Mouse, right? Oh, you shit. Mickey Mouse yeah, has been the OG. around. Yeah, but, like, well, the, but the, the, is that I, cinema? Maybe, well, he was in, he's cinema? been in films before, I think. That yeah. is true. And in terms of true. pop but culture. I guess that's just a yeah. brand, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but he is the OG. He he would be the OG kind of like character yeah. that everyone, everyone I think, knows. I think Mickey Mouse is the most recognized brand, if not. Or like even like yeah, I mean, I could say like yeah. Spider Man. Like you'd something. have to put that on par with like Coca Cola. Yeah. I could say Spider Man, but then that's also because of the comics that were around for ages. Or Iron Man. Yeah. Like Robert Downey Jr. and Iron yeah. Man. So why wh- wh- don't we right. reframe it and say what our favorite movie character is? Oh God, Jesus! <laughs> That's even harder, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> okay, you know, like what, what, what yeah. in your in your s- cinematic, you know, uh, field? What who would you want in your team <laughs> in your <laughs> no that's you're reframing it no like if you were to pick like a top 10 a top three uh movie characters that really influenced you let's, like okay let's say let's say each us three right we're gonna do a five aside tournament we're playing in the football team and we have to pick four other characters to play football with us and you're Wait, not allowed to pick right? james Miller. we're fighting what was going on <laughs> Is this... No, it's a football. It's a five-a-side, five-a-side football game. Yeah, and we have to pick four other characters to play with us. Okay, um, that's brilliant. Uh, that's um, br- uh, Sp- Spider-Man. Okay, I- <laughs> Spider-Man. Right. Spider-Man. Okay. Um, Linda right. Hamilton. <laughs> Sarah Connor. Sorry, Sarah Connor. Um, uh, fuck. Um, Sylvester Stallone. What's it? Because he's in that um Rocky. Yeah, he's in that that football Rocky? movie where they're playing football in the Nazi um war. Like <laughs> they're playing football with the Nazis. Yeah, it, this was a movie. This was a movie where they're prisoners of war in like a Nazi. Okay, boot so camp. you're so you're picking you're picking that character. Sure, the Rocky. Um, yeah, like... I don't really know about the okay. football. League. Oh, Nuno Santos from uh, what is it from from Goal. <laughs> <laughs> and uh i think that's it yeah okay. uh, i think that's four okay yeah that's my answer <laughs> okay all right that's your all team right. okay we've got ollie's team what do we have jabril who's who's yours um i'm gonna go with uh anakin skywalker nice uh i'll go with um indiana jones oh good choice um you can just whip that ball Forrest Gump, dude, he's fast. He's fast, yeah. You know? Yeah, he's fast. That he he has some sporting pedigree. So so you pong. you've got a winger and uh, <laughs> yeah and um, uh, I need a last one. Oh, uh, Hodor, he could be your goalkeeper. <laughs> Hodor, no, no, it's not cinema. It's, this is a TV show. Oh, um, it's got to be no, cinema. No, no. It's got to be the cinema. last one is gonna have to be. Um, Fucking <laughs> Elasta girl, Elas- the elastic lady, Elasta oh, girl, great show. nice. The, all, uh, of the invi- all of the all of the all of the all of the no, it's not, yeah, it's the, it's entire not the invincibles. Family. It's the, <laughs> right. incredible. the incredible. The, incredible. the whole family would be great, actually. Yeah. In the football squad. <laughs> That's absolutely okay, true. Raph, who are you taking? Yo, I'm gonna go with my boy Yoda first and foremost. He has the force, motherfuckers. Um, although we're you have a Jedi as well in your team. Damn. Okay, got. So Yoda, I'll pick yeah. Harry Potter because he's a wizard. Well, he, I've got to He can probably do some like weird shit with his wand. Um, <laughs> sounds, sounds <laughs> weird. Play Quidditch. Where's my broom? It's like, what are you doing to that ball, Harry? Um, uh, I'll pick Aragon because I love him, uh, and I'll pick Neo. <laughs> Although Aragorn might have an injury because he broke his toe kicking that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that helmet. <laughs> Dude, he's out for like six months, metatarsal foot injury. Yeah. Yeah, true. He's quite injury prone, that guy, actually. I'm going to I'm gonna switch it up and I'm going to I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna oh, Wolverine, go with... Wolverine, he never gets injured. He's, he's, he's so Dude. <laughs> fucking Wolverine. It's not Wolverine. like Lissandra Martinez out for another eight weeks. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah there we go that's my choice all right couple wizards well, couple a, mutants that was a fun mm. bonus question yeah that was really fun 
Yeah. We should do that for all we the should, bonus two questions. We should questions. try and put it on. Um, yeah, every every time. <laughs> Football, football, uh, five aside. Um, all right, so all that's left is ratings. So, what do you, what, y- what y'all gonna rate this? Um, I'm gonna s- stick to my original rating, um, just because of the power, the influential power that this movie still holds today, and what it paved to create for the cinematic kind of field. Um, I'm gonna give it a ten. Uh, yeah, t- a ten, ten cyborg eyes out of ten. Nice. Yeah. Um, I will give it eight out of ten. Technoirs, because that was the name of the club, Technoir, and this is a Technoir That's film. Cl- oh, yeah. I thought that was a really nice touch. Yeah. Also, sorry if this is the last thing I say on the movie. Just quickly before we go to Jabril, I had a fun fact. In Poland, this film was retitled The Electronic Murderer, <laughs> which I think is great. <laughs> the, electronic the Electronic Murderer. murderer. That's so funny. Um, all right. I'm going to rate this a eight. Um, one of those like really cool Hondas, like Vespa things that... Um, oh, yeah. The, the mopeds. Oh, wait. Was this from this film? Yeah. That that really cool yeah, the moped, the right? really cool moped she drives. Moped, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Shit, I thought it was from another from the other film. Yeah, uh, eight out of ten. Uh, one of those mopeds because they were awesome. Dude, they like, gotta as as they gotta bring up, those like, back. Try to search it online. They don't make them anymore. Yeah, they're Hondas. Just yeah, just FYI. Um, but yeah. Uh, thanks for listening to this episode. I'm sorry if it's a little bit disjointed. Uh, we're doing it remotely again, and um. Yeah, it was a little bit difficult. We spent like an hour trying to set it up. Uh, we couldn't even see Ollie's beautiful face. Um, Still can't. But yeah, just before we go, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. Give us a five-star rating. Uh, tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your boss. Tell your uh, bus driver. Um, and yeah, uh, catch you on the next one. The next film is AI Artificial Intelligence by Steven Spielberg. Um, and yeah, catch you on the flippity flop and uh, bye bye for now. Bye. It's not a tumor. Right.